SiliconANGLE TV and Wikibon.org present Oracle Open World 2011. And now, host John Furrier and Dave Vellante on the Cube. Okay, we're back at Oracle Open World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and John, uh, we're here live. It's uh, another amazing event, our second year in a row, and uh, I was just going deep into to backup, but you were, you were trolling. What's happening on, out there? Uh, Dave, well, you know, as you know, theCUBE is our flagship telecast for going in-depth to events, and we're at the, the biggest event going on right now uh, besides CES in Las Vegas, and that's Oracle Open World. We're here in San Francisco, California, where they've shut down the streets downtown, and... Uh, the street's basically blocked off, right? Traffic's gridlock. Yeah. Larry Ellison, the billionaire, is out uh, putting his company out there. All his customers are in town, doing biz dev, doing a party in. There's no, re they can't get into any restaurants. It's really a packed house here in San Francisco, so... If you go to San Francisco, don't go there. It's like $1,000 a night for a hotel room. Um, there's no hotel rooms to begin with. You got to drive to Santa Clara as your next go available. Go to New York and you save know. a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, just get, go to Hawaii and <laughs> chill out on the beach. No, and, and follow siliconangle.com and you'll get all the coverage. Um, but seriously, Oracle Open World, the action right now is, is that, uh, um, for the most part, uh, there's a lot of mobile conversations out in the industry, not much here. So the news that I see on the floor and walking around the show here is that not a big discussion around mobile. Okay, at SAP, Sapphire is a big mobile conversation. So there's, there's that, that big issue. The other one is that Java One is dominating the online Twitter stream. Not a surprise, uh, Java One is geeky, it's tech, and people are interested because they're programmers. Uh, and the other thing is, is that last night, Mark Benioff linked to siliconangle.com's post Calling when we called uh, Larry's, the, probably the worst keynote Alex Williams wrote, worst keynote he's ever seen. Uh, Mark Benioff actually retweeted, worst highlighted. Worst he's ever seen from Larry. Well, yeah, I think in general he was intimating <laughs> that, from probably Larry's. Um, but Benioff, you know, obviously highlighted that post, but he was very active in the Twitter stream, and Mark Benioff, who's the you know, founder of Salesforce.com, said, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Um, kind of reference to the whole keynote. Um, and Mark has been very um, vocal, he's going to be giving a talk here. But Dreamforce was big as well, and you know they spent like zillions of dollars and they had kinds of bands there. So there's a big dynamic between Salesforce and Oracle, obviously, SAP and Oracle conversation. We heard from you on the backup. There's a lot of technologies going on around the database that's important. And so for the developers out there and for enterprises, you know, the database conversation is the hottest thing right now, and it's really around performance and approach, close versus open and performance. Again, that's here. Again, what I'm not seeing is the mobile conversation. Well, everybody's talking about the iPhone launch tomorrow, right? I mean, uh... Yeah, iPhone 5, you know. Um, and then, the, you know, Apple obviously is the first event, Dave, where Steve Jobs will not be there. I have friends at uh, Apple, they flew to uh, uh, Japan. There's going to be a worldwide global announcement around the iPhone, and it's really the first event where Steve will not be uh, present. I, I understand they're not streaming it live. Um, probably for that reason, they don't want Tim to get trashed on the key, big, uh, the uh, Twitter back channel. <laughs> his, 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 his I haven't heard that, so. Yeah, that's why I, I, I had heard that, and um, kind of makes sense, right? You know, kind of protecting Tim a little bit, but. Uh, the other, the other news out there that's on the mainstream right now is Google's defending its Mo Motorola acquisition. Uh, this won't screw us is a direct quote from Eric Schmidt. Um, and then there was some posts that we highlighted on SiliconANGLE. My personal blog, which I highlighted, siliconangle.com slash Furrier, F-U-R-R-I-E-R. -E Go check out my blog. That's where I have my unfiltered opinions. So I, I had can attest to that, John. I created a separate site. <laughs> no Dave. gloves in that site. I, I created a separate <laughs> site for the unfiltered opinion. I guess it's not SiliconAngle.com worthy in terms of main content, but you're well, going to hear like, me get aggressive in that the, blog. The thing I like about that site, John, is you're here in Silicon Valley. I mean, I'm 3,000 miles away in Boston. You're, you, you, you see all the action. You get a lot of inside baseball, and it's a good platform for you to just share that. You know? Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, for example, I wrote a post on my personal blog, and I said, you know, actually in the title, I said, HP should punch Oracle in the face. Uh, and I got a comments on Twitter. I've never seen that in a title before. Um, but that thing went viral. And the, my point is, you know, this is an environment where HP needs to step up and punch Oracle in the face because, you know, Oracle's been pounding HP into the ground with Mark Hurd. There's references of TakeOver, obviously the Leo Apotheker, you know, debacle, Ray Lane, 
uh, Larry, you know, enemies. So this is a real storyline there with HP and Oracle that's, that's real. It's, um, what's going on at HP though, John? I mean, what do they punch them in the face with? I mean, you, what would you do if you, were, if you were Ray Lane? Would you like, find somebody else to be Ray Lane? Or would you, what uh, would you do? Well, there's a lot of politics at the board. I mean, first of all, I think HP did the right thing by getting rid of Leo Apotecker. Uh, he didn't come on the Cube. Had he been on the Cube, he might have maybe stayed longer at HP, uh, getting his word well, out. You heard the, what was it? Uh, was it Todd Nielsen said that the data that's discussed on the Cube gets into our product plans? Yeah, maybe that would have happened at the HP. The Cube has a far-reaching reach into HP. So, Leo, you know, if you had stayed on the Cube at uh, HP uh, Discover, you might have been safe. No, seriously. All, in all seriousness, putting that aside. Um, you know, getting someone in there like Meg Whitman is good. I thought they could promote from within, but I guess Donatelli and Bradley uh, did not pass the vetting process from what I heard, sources close to the company. Um, the board's in shambles, and mainly because HP's trying to get back to the old HP way. It's been really a, you know, a decade-long struggle since Carly Farina um, left HP, and she destroyed the company uh, through her, her style. Uh, shutting down offices, taking the pictures of Bill and Dave off the wall. Um, so you know, so there's some history there, and that's just kind of the process. What I would do to answer your question is, I would basically take the big, powerful part of the organization, ESSN, I'd keep the PC, PCG, P, whatever you want to call it, PSG, Personal Computer Group, I'd retool it. I would definitely not get rid of WebOS. WebOS is a major asset, so much to the point where a a very well senior, uh, very uh, senior engineer within Apple told me privately, WebOS is actually a really op great operating system, and it really the only threat to Apple, and I can't believe that, that HP's throwing that away. So, you know, WebOS is solid, and uh, HP's stupid for get rid of that, in my opinion. PC division, I would retool and go after the tablets, low price point, $99, and go aggressively in there and uh, win that market. You made a point uh, at VMworld when we were on live. You said, when, Dave, has a company ever got rid of something that it was an asset that where it was number one. I mean, the, num out. HP's I mean, number one in personal computers as a huge brand and they're going to just you know, call it on there. The, they're inside the red zone, as we say in football. Why would they actually get rid of it? They can certainly retool and they have the executives to do that. The services business, they bought EDS. They have an army of sales and they have a supply chain expertise. HP is not a hurting company. All the problems at HP, Dave, has been the ivory tower. And I think uh, Meg Whitman and Ray are addressing that and I think they're on the right path. Autonomy is a whole different story. Well, I mean, I was just going to say, John, I, I, you know, Dave Cahill wrote a piece on Wikibon talking about the $117 million fix uh, for, for the HP Autonomy deal, was essentially you know, do, the, do the buyout, just, just bag the deal. Cost you $117 million you know, fee, but I read recently, Meg said, it's basically by UK law, we got to go through with it. Yeah. I, so you know, why I, have even a, a breakup fee? Yeah, you read, that on Sil you read that on Silk and Angle, because I, I broke that story uh, after the Financial Times intimated that. But basically what happened is, is that they could break it up. This, this, they're afraid they'd get sued. Technically, they could. Um, but HP's committed to the deal. I talked to folks a couple weeks ago. Absolutely, they are committed to doing the deal. It's going to be a done deal. Um, I retract my prediction that that would not go through. Even though I think they didn't need to do it, um, I think uh, um, they did it out of fear. Uh, and one theory I do have is that Larry Ellison was instrumental in HP overpaying for autonomy. Um, and we wrote a, we broke a story on SiliconAngle.com where um, Frank Quattrone's slides from the CEO of Autonomy was leaked through an Oracle blog post. I'm sorry, not an Oracle blog post, Oracle press release. It looked like a blog Most post. Most unique press release I ever saw. I've never seen a corporation in the history of the world release yeah. documents like that. So, you know, hats off to Oracle for the aggressiveness. Again, that's why HP should punch them in the face, uh, getting back to that blog post. But uh -huh. what Oracle showed was that the CEO of Autonomy shopped the deal to Oracle prior to HP closing. And we all know Frank Quattrone is Mr. Auction Model. He loves to get the deals up on these prices, so he probably told HP, we're going to see Mark Hurd. If you don't sign on the line that's dotted, and they probably said, okay, 10 billion, you got me. Um, so I think that's my theory there. Um, I think autonomy never really was in play with Oracle. If anything, Oracle would like to see HP spend more money. Frank Quattrone is the Scott Boris of uh of, of Silicon yeah. Valley tech. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, I think you know, the, the whole world has Apple Envy. We've been saying it on theCUBE since we started theCUBE a year ago. Um, Apple Envy is, is all over the world and uh, 
I think Oracle's got a long way to go to even put themselves in the same sentence as Steve Jobs. The only thing uh, that Oracle has in common with Steve Jobs is that Larry Ellison has been around, the, around the, as, long as long as Steve has. So John, we're here live at Oracle Open World. We're inside the QLogic booth, we should mention that. I know we you know, get a lot of people out there on, on Justin TV, a lot of gamers. Um, QLogic provides the infrastructure for computing. All the, all the bits passing through you know, QLogic you know, cards and devices, and you know, they keep the data flowing. So thank you to QLogic for having us here. It's, uh, it's a great spot, great venue. A little different vibe than yeah, yeah, yeah. VMworld. I mean, I think, I think uh, you know, QLogic, if it wasn't for QLogic and EMC and others that supported us to get here, shout out to e uh, EMC's backup and recovery team for, for uh, supporting us here with some sponsorship. But ultimately, Dave, independent media that we are, we have to kind of call it as we see it. And Silicon Angle on this show is that Oracle is the 500 pound gorilla in the room. They're a big incumbent company. And when we talk about Justin TV and the environment that we, that we sh uh, share content with, they're gamers. They don't know about Larry Ellison. A lot of the guys who are under 30, like Larry who? Isn't that the guy on, on the yacht, the billionaire? He's been around the industry for a while, but the future business model is going to be about gaming. It's going to be about openness. It's going to be about new applications. So you know, Steve Jobs certainly is disrupting the marketplace, but companies like Oracle really need to open up that innovation to enable new products, new markets. How do games run faster? How do people share more on mobile devices? We heard people complaining, I can't get your content on the, on the mobile device. Well, that's because it runs on Oracle. Um, <laughs> only kidding. Um, but uh, you know, that's the reality. I mean, you can make this stuff bigger and bigger and fatter. But at the end of the day, you hit a performance point, it's monolithic. You know, it's a big, centralized approach. And that's what Oracle's trying to do, and we'll see if they can, can, can change the direction. Well, it's just, you know, Oracle, as we were talking about earlier, they spend a lot of money on R&D. Um, so they got the chops to respond. When a big industry trend comes along like Hadoop, or, or, or data in memory like uh, SAP HANA, what do they do? They go develop something, they put it out there, you know, it's early release, but it, what it does do is freezes the market. All, all the Oracle DBAs and companies who run Oracle say, oh, Oracle's got that. Yeah, yeah. Oracle sales rep says, we got that. What do you want? We got cloud, we got big data. So Mark Andreessen, who's a um, big time venture capitalist now, founder of the browser, uh, co-founder of Netscape, Cloud Cloud, he's right. on the board of HP, he's on the board of Facebook. Mark Andreessen, he's, is, he, he's got his hands in all the action. I mean, you're on the board of Facebook. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, you know, he sees a lot of cool he's things. Uh, he, said, he, he said that in his portfolio of Andreessen Horowitz, not one of his startups buys Oracle databases. So, you know, Mark Andreessen essentially saying that Oracle's days are numbered. Uh, Mark Benioff would also argue that Andreessen's right. Um, folks at, at companies like EMC and others probably agree privately that uh, Oracle's days are numbered, uh, mainly because they're the incumbent and ultimately have to change. Right now, Oracle has a lot of market power and they do a lot of R&D like you pointed out, so they have to constantly stay ahead of the curve and deliver value. So far they're doing it, still huge power player in the marketplace. And yeah, you know, the question is if they don't move fast enough, then the marketplace will react. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, days are numbered. I mean, if, if I'd be interested in what the time frame would be because I, I just see Oracle as just an incredibly effective you know, execution machine, throwing off tons of cash. You can, you can not like their strategy, you can not like their lock-in, but you know, they're getting it done, and so I, I would not predict the demise of Oracle, but they don't have, they'll buy. You know, Larry Ellison used to criticize his competitors for writing checks and not writing code, and then he changed the rules of the game. So you know what, times have changed. I'm going to start writing checks and buying companies. And that really set forth the sea of, uh, of acquisitions and has really ch fundamentally changed the, the business forever, culminating in the Sun acquisition, uh, which has really put a lot of pressure on what were traditional friends of Oracle are now, you know, frenemies, to use one of your words. And, um, you know, HP and Oracle was, uh, with, with, with Unix databases, was a famous attack on IBM's mainframe business. And it really yeah. helped you so, know, neutralize IBM's monopoly. So I'm going to just share, we have a lot of folks out there who are new to the industry watching on uh, some of our outlets that we're syndicating to, including Justin TV. Just some buzzwords, folks out there, of the kind of concepts that Oracle's playing in. Um, in the enterprise and in the main cloud market. Because when you think of cloud, you think about Amazon. Amazon obviously made a play for WebOS. Amazon and Google are the big, big players in cloud. Uh, words like business intelligence, open source, MySQL, data analytics. And I'm reading from SiliconANGLE's proprietary dashboard that we have for our, our monitoring tools. Mobile data, open source, 
um, companies like IBM, Hadoop, private cloud, data, data visualization. So these are, we should explain, these are filtered tweets basically from the fire hose that are really relevant to what we're doing in the enterprise, right? Yeah, so we have a proprietary tool that essentially filters out the sector that Oracle plays in. We call it Vertical Engine. And right now the top trending items within this vertical, industry vertical, is uh, open source, Apache, referencing the Apache Foundation, which is driving Hadoop and a lot of them, the standards around open source. Um, big data, obviously, um, hot with NoSQL analytics. MySQL, NoSQL, VMware, cloud services, and business intelligence, and business analytics. Um, so, that's the core area that we see being disrupted right now, that's being talked about on Twitter by the most influential people in the industry. And, you know, and that's debatable, who's influential. And what we have identified, those influential people, and um, these are, this is by the way, real crowdsourcing information. This isn't like the press that are pandering to Oracle. Um, like for example, GigaOM just gave a positive review on Larry Ellison. I love GigaOM, but I mean, come on, GigaOM. Stop sucking up to, to Oracle. The keynote bombed. So come on. So, so but it's interesting, John, a lot of the things that you're talking about, Apache, uh, NoSQL, you don't necessarily associate those with Oracle, but you mentioned earlier that Java 1 is really a, a very active, right? It's a, it's a, a concurrent event with Oracle Open World. Um, what's going on in your mind with, with, with Java and, and open source? Uh, with Oracle. Well, so like we talked about the trending items and, and uh, around MySQL, NoSQL. So in, in R, and you mentioned the R&D that Oracle invests in. Oracle's number one job right now is to make sure that they don't get screwed into a position of being boxed as this monolithic mainframe, old, big, iron uh, machine. And that's essentially their cloud strategy right now. So Exadata and now Excel Analytics um, and Parallelism are great concepts for them. I like the direction. If they could pull that off, it's a home run for them. Uh, uh, we'll see. However, the guys who actually build the code are all really gravitating towards things like Hadoop. Apache Software Foundation, which is the open source foundation for you know, around Apache and all those technologies. Hadoop is the fastest growing open source project in the history of Apache Software Foundation. MySQL has been a great database that now you know, Oracle has, is being threatened by NoSQL technologies. Uh, and you're seeing a tons of startups out there developing it. So Java 1 is a very important part of the equation, so it's a, it's a small part of the event, but it's very popular with geeks. It's going on right now in the uh, other half of San Francisco. Yeah, so, I mean, again, we talked about this earlier, one of the things that Oracle got when it picked up Sun was it got Java. It didn't want to allow IBM to control Java because a lot of applications, most applications in Oracle are written in Java. Now, you know, Oracle controls its own destiny there. Um, you think IBM's kicking itself for not purchasing Sun, or, or do you think it's just a better fit inside of Oracle? Uh, I think it's a better fit inside of Oracle. I think IBM acquiring Sun, I don't think it was a fit culturally for IBM. As Too you much overlap? Well, well, two reasons. You've pointed out before that Oracle buy, I mean, IBM buys deals. They don't do the mega acquisitions, they buy value. And I think that's a value play with Sun, but still a lot of money for them. And two, there's overlap on the product. So, yeah, yeah. and I this thing is too big of an acquisition for IBM to swallow given the massive size of it. But IBM is very strong right now. I got to say IBM uh, is very strong financially and their customer base is growing, it's robust. We see them on our radar all the time on our monitoring tool. Very active in the social sphere as well. Um, very good. Yeah, it's services-led business model is, is working. Um, you know, you were talking about Carly Fiorina before and I, I, I infer from your comments that you're not a huge fan. But one of the things she wanted to do, she wanted to buy PwC. Now, of course, she wanted to pay a lot more than IBM ended up paying. IBM acquired PwC for what, in retrospect, was uh, you know, a song. Perhaps one of the better acquisitions ever in the com computer industry behind VMware. EMC's acquisition of VMware, but it was, you know, great. It helped transform IBM into the services powerhouse and consulting powerhouse that it is today. Oh, I mean, I'm not sure about that. I mean, IBM picked it up because HP couldn't get the deal done. Carly Fiorina, if you remember, went after PwC. That's what I'm saying. And that was her first board um, interaction that ultimately led to her demise, but she ended up forcing Compaq down the throat of HP. But well, uh, She you know, wanted I think, to do a deal. I mean, IBM clearly was ahead of the curve on the services, and they went there. 
and that's who they are now. IBM is not the big computer company they once were. They're very, very diversified. I wouldn't say General Electric like, GE like, but they're still a very strong, diversified company. Still slow. I mean, you talk to IBM people. You know, Ray, Ray Wang was giving them a lot of props for being great marketing. I don't think so. I think IBM's got great, you know, marketing when you look at it from a TV standpoint. Corporate. They got corporate marketing. Yeah. They got great TV commercials. They got billboards. You know, but they are definitely not a leader in social media at all. I mean, I think you know, they have a lot of activation out there, but I just don't see them um, being doing well on social well, media. Well, they're really not a product company, right? I mean, it was, I look at Oracle as a product company, I look at a company like EMC as a product company, and the marketing is much more you know, product oriented. Oracle, I mean, uh, IBM is a you know, big services company, and, uh, and, and that's what the messaging, that's why I think well, the I mean, messaging they, you know, is so good They have good Lotus Notes, they have a lot of this, you know, they have, remember the Lotus Notes, they still have that, those kinds of unified communication solutions out there. They could have brought a Facebook to the table. Companies like Jive and Yammer shouldn't even be around because IBM is letting them. So these startups like Yammer are getting in there because uh, the, IBM lets them. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you got to go back to mainframes and ThinkPad to name products that IBM, you know, really led at. So I mean, let's just see what's going on around the web today, Dave, because you know, the, right now we know that uh, you know, SiliconANGLE is leading the charge uh, in enterprise and big data. Um, the big, big data world is very interesting. We got Hadoop World coming up, SiliconANGLE.TV. SiliconANGLE.com will be broadcasting live at Hadoop World with, uh, in New York City next month. Um, let's talk about some other uh, CUBE events coming around the corner. Maybe we do some one day CUBEs, maybe go, go to Europe again. So, so we might bring uh, Bring that, bring that game out to Europe. So, a lot of tech act action going on. What do you think, in your opinion, is going on with the whole cloud meets storage interaction? We've been talking about storage paradigms becoming so fast. We've heard it you know, from Facebook, we've heard it from Facebook to VMware now, Oracle, that you know, solid state drives, flash memory is changing the game on architecture. I think, you know, we like to use sports analogies here in theCUBE. I think it's the early part of the game here. It's maybe the third inning second or third inning as it relates to cloud, I don't think we've seen the, the disruption yet. I mean, you know, we, we've certainly seen Amazon. Um, we had Shutterfly on, John, on a Wikibon Peer Insight, and they told us that they were able to take their cost per terabyte or cost per byte or cost per bit, however you want to measure it, um, and reduce it by two thirds. So if they were paying a dollar, they're now paying 30, 33 cents, you know, per whatever unit. Now, that's disruptive, and that was a, you know, a, a, a true cloud use case, an example. You haven't seen as many of those. So what's happening in my mind is the, the cloud storage is not big enough yet to offset the traditional legacy business, and the legacy business is snapping back from the recession, it's still growing. Yeah. And, as David Floyer wrote, you've got this kind of um, oligopoly, or what he called a cartel, that's emerged. You've got four or five or six companies that are basically you know, keeping prices high, working with the VMware, and you know, competing against each other, and sort of staving off a lot of the, the little guys. And I think eventually the cloud is going to completely disrupt this business. Um, I think a lot of these guys are positioning for that. I think I think the big storage companies realize it, and you know, they're investing in it. You saw EMC do Atmos. You see, you know, NetApp making some acquisitions, but they've really not paid off yet. I think some of them will, some of them won't, but. Uh, you know, I think the Amazon model, the whole S3 model, is just highly disruptive because most, here's why, most of the world's data doesn't belong on traditional enterprise disk. And I would say it's at least 70 to 80% of it. All this data growth and all this notion of, 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 of unstructured data growth and 1.2 zettabytes, it, most of so, it belongs sorry, in Sorry the to break into this, but breaking news, Sean Parker is now on Twitter. Um, for the folks who don't know, Sean Parker was the inventor, of, one of the co-founders of Napster, uh, first president of Facebook, obviously in the movie The Social Network. He was, uh, T Justin Timberlake played him. Um, he had just sent a tweet out, sorry Zuck, I had to do it someday, meaning Zuckerberg. So Sean Parker is now officially on Twitter. One his, tweet. His handle is S. Parker. In other Napster related news, Napster is being bought by Rhapsody. That's breaking news today. So let's go back to Sean Parker. Uh, he, you know, I just sent him a, a tweet, said, you rule. Let's see if he follows me back. Um, this guy is a maverick, young gun, obviously cares about tech. Um, the guy's cool. I mean, he, he wants to create an environment where development can be open, open and very hacker culture. He also throws the kick-ass parties um, in San Francisco. So uh, he just had that, his, uh, his big party with uh, Spotify. So uh, kudos to him and uh, let's see what he does with that. What else is going on? I'll see the Apple announcement tomorrow. I'm just so bullish on Apple right now. You going to get a new iPhone? 
Yeah, I'll get the new iPhone 5 for sure. Um, definitely. Um, my iPhone 4 is getting a little bit beat up, so you know, time to get a new one. But Apple's a great company in terms of, they just got their shit together. I mean, they're good. I mean, the iPad, still to this day, I said at CES uh, in January, um, no one even comes close to them. I mean, there's some Android products out there, but it's hard to do. The engineering behind the iPad is so phenomenal. Um, it's just a great product. Uh, I see everyone's on board with it. It's just great. I saw the BlackBerry tablet walking through the airport the other day. You know, I mean, you know, cutting prices, and we saw what happened with HP. It's just, it's unbelievable that the competition just can't touch them. What, what's your What's your prognosis, though, John? On you get the on Apple. I mean, you got the the the, the legend. You know, is now you know stepping down, stepping yeah. aside. I think the prognosis is good for Apple. I think you know. The succession plan was carefully orchestrated by the company. The company is pumping on all cylinders. Their retail outlets are amazing. The great margin, great channel distribution of high quality products, great brand mind share with users. Um, I mean, ever since I got a Mac, I've never had a virus on it, so it's been phenomenal. Um, I know the PC purists out there will be like, you know, kicking me, although I have some PCs at home. Um, but just overall, their products are great, and if Tim Cook can bring that mojo and continue with their great engineering they have, they're going to be good. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously a great company, and, and, and so you feel, and I agree with you, by the hold, way, that buy that, and hold. That, that that company is going to be here for a while. I mean, they're the number one value tech company out there, yeah. which is a tremendous story. And, and seeing that come full circle, you know, after, uh, after Jobs got squeezed out. But, you know, you had another comment you made, John, when we were talking about the HP uh, scenarios, is you said, you know, imagine if when the Apple board went and tapped Jobs um, to come back, and he said, you know what? Because at the time, the PC business was hurting. Apple was irrelevant. Imagine yeah. if you said, well, we're going to get out of PCs. We're going to go buy a services company. <laughs> yeah, this is my argument for I HP. Mean, so my argument for HP is just that. Um, Apple was a massive turnaround led by Steve Jobs. HP can actually get in the business and disrupt Apple. They have WebOS. WebOS is a weapon. Android, as you see with all the mobile patents, is, uh, in, is being threatened by this. And if you look at what Amazon did with the Kindle and Fire, there's a lot of debates going on. There's a great post on Furrier, my blog, siliconangle.com, so that's Furrier, where I posted, boom, the mobile, mobile angle by Jean-Louis Gasset, and I added another link on there from the guy who was the CTO of Palm. Two great posts about mobile. If you're really interested in knowing about what's going on in mobile, go to my blog and read that post. There are two posts that I link to that are very deep, that tell the future. If you're a developer or you're interested in knowing the future of mobile, go to that post. Um, because mobile is still up for grabs. HP has core competency in this area. They should definitely focus hard on it. They could win that in three to four years, have a great position, number two, number three, easy. All they got to do is wake up, hit the alarm clock, and they're number three in the business, just on the supply chain alone. So HP, realize that, Meg Whitman, stay in the PC business, win the number three, number two position, and fight for number one, and see what it turns your way. So it's probably a, a good time to, to mention, John. I mean, for a lot of you out there, Oracle Open World might be new, the tech business might be new. You know, it can get confusing. The buzzwords, the acronyms, I mean, it's just brutal, right? So go to siliconangle.com, go to siliconangle.tv, check out Services Angle, our newest publication. Check out wikibon.org, the wiki, where we do the deep research, and you'll find a lot of resources. Uh, John just mentioned a number of them. Uh, today on Wikibon, Floyer has a piece, David Floyer, uh, our CTO, up on Oracle and extreme computing claims. Oracle came out with some new Spark supercluster chip saying that we're number one, and he's, he squinted through that and said, well, not really. So take a look at that. Um, on the Wikibon blog, I've got a piece up there today on, on Oracle Open World and what to expect. Jeff Kelly wrote a piece on on, on, on Oracle's big data strategy, big data partner, or big data boat anchor. Um, you know, check that out. And so, so if you have questions, hopefully we have answers on, that, on those resources. If we don't, send us a note, send us a tweet. I'm at D. Vellante, he's at Furrier. Uh, uh, check us out, uh, ask a question. We'll try to get an answer for you. Yeah, I mean, um, siliconangle.com is a site that uh, I started a couple years ago. Then Mark Risen Hopkins joined me. And we've been growing ever since. We've added great writers like Alex Williams, Clint, Finley, and a lot more coming. We have Kristen Nicole, obviously came on from Mashable as well. Got a great team of writers, got a, uh, emerging writers. We've got the siliconangle.tv team. Um, we've done an amazing job of staying focused on what I call quality uh, content and we wanted to stay low key mainly because we didn't want to have banner ads on our site, Dave. Banner ads on our website do not exist. ServicesAngle.com, our new vertical publication, our vertical site, has sponsored lo logos on there but no banner ads. Banner ads 
do not drive quality. They why why drive, is that? Can you explain? Because the only way to make money in the publishing business is to, with banner ads, is to have volume. You need people clicking on ads. No one clicks on ads. Ads are not cool, as the, we learned in, in the social network. Ads are not cool, but mainly, don't work. I mean, in order, you don't have to, you got to do volume, millions and millions of page views to make any money so with banner ads. So it's a page ever. view game. Yeah, so how do you get millions? It's a sweat, <laughs> sweatshop. How do you get millions and millions of views? You put out content uh, that sucks. Okay, you put out content that uh, is g for the general audience, train wrecks, you know, you make up rumors. If you look at all the top blogs out there, they got to where they were because they were rumor mongering and doing all those things and uh, have to drive for that sensationalism, the TMZ kind of programming. So we didn't want to do that. We want to stay focused on the quality we care about. We love gaming, we love graphics, we love big data, we love tech. So we wanted to kind of stay in the enterprise and then go from there. Yeah, so you know, we, we, we sometimes call call ourselves and have been called the ESPN of tech, and um, what does that mean? It means we pride ourselves of being at the events, covering the events. From it's really important from an independent perspective. Yes, we get you know financing, funding. We get supporters like QLogic who help us with the infrastructure. EMC sponsored a spotlight here uh, today, and we've got other contributors, and and that really helps underwrite the independent research. Okay. I think people don't, don't realize, we have a team of, of analysts and researchers and writers and bloggers watching the live stream. They'll be pounding the news, writing about the guests that we have, talking about what's going on at the event. And we really want to cover so it better we got, than anybody. So we got close to 2,000 people watching right now live concurrently. So I want to tell everyone there's two posts on siliconangle.com you should go read right now. One is called Hadoop, NoSQL, Big Data Job Trends. See, uh, senior editor Alex Williams just put that post up. Um, Apple's looking for Hadoop administrators. Everyone's putting Hadoop backends in there. No doubt, no reason, no doubt why Oracle announced Hadoop. To your point, you know, following the market with R and D. Um, and Clint Finley just put out a post called "Oracle tries to hijack the NoSQL movement with big data, big data appliance." So. Clint's post is specifically saying that Oracle is hijacking the NoSQL movement, which is open source based, by launching their proprietary appliance. So, two posts to read there, uh, worth reading. Um, and in other news, um, just Facebook, as I predicted, is tweaking their timeline product quietly. All Facebook.com just tweaked out that, that, or wrote a post a couple days ago saying that uh, Facebook is adding changes to their timeline. Obviously, people loved it. Some people hated it. I came out and said that that timeline is going to change the face of Facebook, and but we'll, we'll have uh, minor improvements. But to me, the Facebook uh, story is really about how they're going to turn all these users into developers. If you look at the younger generation, my opinion is they're going to turn into developers. Developer, doing software development is going to be a standard for anyone in the business who has a technology product. I think that ultimately, the user experience is going to move from searching and browsing and clicking to actually scripting. I think you're going to see that for the for the younger generation. Hacking, data science. Right? I mean, I think you know the tools are so easy to use now. You should be able to customize your user experience, and I think you're going to see the younger generation do that. You see a lot of the hackers doing it. Um, uh, I saw my son playing World of Warcraft the other day. I'm like, hey, how did you pay for that? He goes, oh, I just hacked it. I just have a created a server on Amazon. He's 16, so that's cool. I think that's really cool. That's the future. And I think multiplayer gaming is going to be the collaborative, collaboration use case of the future. And you, know, you talk to top, the top venture capitalist at Kleiner Perkins, the guy from EA, he, you know, he says the same thing. And you've talked to Stanford scientists, the people who are playing World of Warcraft, the kids playing Call of Duty, you know, collaboration with the headset on, talking to their teammates. That's the future work environment. So you, got a, you have a 16 year old, you got a couple kids. Yeah. Um, and what do you advise your, your children? I mean, first of all, are they into, are they into tech? What do, you, what, do you, what do you advise them? Well, they're users of tech. I mean, my son's you know, kind of a hacker here and there, but he's not like a hardcore hacker. Um, he's just a user of tech, and hacking is normal user experience for him. To push the envelope for him, he's moving such an accelerated rate around tech, he needs more. So he gets on YouTube, he gets on these websites, and they hack. Um, that's one in the spectrum. I talked to some guys at Berkeley who, uh, computer science guys, they, what they do for fun is, besides partying and the normal things in college, is they write their own games, social games. So that's the new environment. It's, it's pretty exciting. And, and I think that's where the innovation's going to come. Right. Just, All like, right. just like Steve Wozniak had hacked uh, telephone calls at Berkeley, you're going to see new kids come out of the block and they're going to hack Oracle. So I, that's why I think Oracle will be disrupted. And, and 
And, and they'll hack data. I mean, that's the other thing that we heard from people like uh, Hillary Mason at, at Bitly. Uh, Bill Schmarzo is coming on uh, later on this week. And these, there's a new breed of data scientists. Now, of course, data scientists, have, as you know, John, have been around forever. But there's a new breed of data scientists coming out. All of a sudden, it's a hot new area. Um, you're seeing companies like EMC provide education and training services to enable you know, people to become data scientists because there's, there's a lack of them. There's a predicted lack of them. And so um, it's a new emerging role within the enterprise. As I say, it's been around for a long time, but it's now become you know, the hot commodity. Hal Varian, the chief economist at Google, said that you know, it, it's, it's going to be you know, the, the mathematicians and the, and the data scientists are really going to be the, the, the hot job in the coming decade. Dave, what companies do you see really making a difference out there? I mean, we are here at Oracle Open World, San Francisco, California. We're the Cube, flagship telecast at siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. But there's a lot of action going on. I mean, they're closing the streets down. This is 45,000 people are here. What companies do you see making an impact out there? Talk about those horses on the track. I mean, I see you got all the companies here, Intel, all the big guys, little guys out there as well. Yeah, I think the, um, the, the little of the big is VMware, right? I mean, that's the that's the, the sort of new kid on the block that's won a bunch of grade one races and is in terrific shape. It's hitting its stride. It's got a very, very strong ecosystem. Um, so that's clearly you know, one to watch. In, in, in the space that I follow, the infrastructure space and, and, and the storage space, I mean, I, I see, you know, we had Jay Shri Ulal on, on the Cube, yeah. CEO of, uh, of Arista, a very interesting company. Um, I think in the storage space, you're seeing a, a lot of really disruptive uh, companies. I would put Cleversafe on that list. Uh, Tintree is another one that we're watching. Nirvonix, the cloud storage company, is another one that we're watching. I, li I like Nirvonix. I think they're a cloud play that no one's really talking about right now that has a lot of traction in the marketplace. Yeah, they're growing. Um, um, former QLogic guy, uh, Scott Jenneru, Steve Zivanek, they, they're, they're now over there. Um, and they're, they are growing, they're growing very well. And the whole notion is basically, you, you were asking me before about cloud storage. The difference between traditional storage and cloud storage is, you know, in cloud storage you don't pay up front. Right? You, you don't pay maintenance, right? You, you don't install it in, in your, your site. I mean, if you want to, you can, but. All right, but, so let me ask you, which company's going to be bought? What are the big acquisitions do you see? Um, well, I think that, uh, I, uh, you mentioned Nirvonics, I think they're definitely a, a, a one that's ultimately going to gonna, gonna go. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a whole breed of emerging flash companies that are exploding. Um, SolidFire is a company that just hit the market. Um, and, and, you know, Fusion IO just went public, right? I think Fusion IO's aspirations are to, to stay independent for a while and, 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 you know, make some noise, do some damage. but. You know, they need to become acquisition proof, and that means they got to get bigger, yeah. or somebody's going to pick them up because they got this awesome technology. So I'm getting some messages here on the um, on my Twitter stream and direct messages, and people skyping the hell out of me. Thank you very much. Um, send them all in. We want to talk about uh, what you what you want to talk about. Happy to sell, tell you my opinion on anything. But one message we're hearing from the field out there is that Larry's messaging focuses on yachts and 10x performance, 10 times. Obviously, the acquisition he referred to in his keynote. The other interesting thing from a mobility standpoint, SAP at the Sapphire event talked about mobility being the home run. The Oracle has a, open, um, has a uh, user mobile computing uh, initiative, and here in their pavilion, there's only six companies that are in there. Jabra, Lenovo, Mobiltron, Oracle Mobile Field Service, Samsung, and Verizon. So Jabra's the ear guys, right? Yeah, the so it's like, like I mean, That's nothing. That's not a representation of the mobile business. Mobile business is booming. It's the most disruptive thing we've seen on the planet besides social networking uh, that's really changing the game right now. So, no mobile. I mean, so I think Oracle has to turn up the R&D big time uh, to get some mobile. And I think next year you'll see that. And you know, we talked with uh, SAP. We're looking at the CEO right now uh, from uh, SAP, yeah, Jim Schnabe. Um, which, by the way, we should get Larry Ellison on theCUBE. That would make it uh, interesting, wouldn't it? Can you imagine Larry Ellison coming on theCUBE? We uh, had both CEOs from SAP inside theCUBE. Yeah, I know, and it'd uh, be great to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Larry, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we could be able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be great, it would be a good theater either way. Um, what else, Mark, what do you see in the news there? Anything going on, Mark, Mark Risen Hopkins, editor? Yeah, everything's happening with mobile, huh? Nothing's happening with mobile, are they? Nothing, all, nothing happening with mobile. It's, it's all here. It's, 
Yeah, so I mean, you know, what is what does mobile mean to Oracle? I mean, we saw what it meant to SAP, right? Enabling a whole new breed of applications. So you would think that Oracle's applications, people would want to put them on mobile, the mobile enterprise, the the, the app store for the enterprise. So here's a here's a, uh, a a comment that we're seeing here. What a bunch of idiots! I just put that in there. It's basically stars. You can put the the word you want to put in there. Equipment and classes for high-tech learning and extre are extremely expensive. Hardware equipment in the tens of thousands of dollars. Who the hell would be able to, to afford all that? Why would I put all my personal data in someone else's hard drive? Uh, uh, talking about the cloud, Privacy. Right? Just in general, you know, this is the, the theme. So again, this is the monolithic big iron uh, vision that I was talking about. No, I think that, that commenter is basically was, was, is, is responding to my comments on that most of the d world's data will be in the cloud. Um, and my response to that would be that in most cases, I think cloud service providers are going to do a better job protecting your data and storing your data than you will. I mean, I don't know, how many disk drives do you have at home that are just sort of unprotected, sometimes backed up, sometimes not, whether it's your kid's laptop or maybe you have a NAS device. I mean, I, I, data management is a nightmare. So the, the why is because they're going to do a better job managing it. Now, your question about privacy is, is a good one and it's a fair one. You know, but you know, we had Tim uh, O'Reilly on the cube, and he basically said, you know what, there is no more privacy in the internet. Number one, number two is, if you, if if, if you're going to get something in return, you might be willing to give up your privacy. We do that all the time. You think there's privacy in the internet? You have a mobile phone. There's no privacy, right? I mean, Yelp's following you, Google's following you, Apple's following you, everybody's following. Well, you. listen, data data privacy is a big issue. People care about it, but they don't really know they care about it until something happens to them. Look, if you look at what Facebook's doing, Facebook has clearly shown that people don't mind sharing information. What's going to come around, though, is people are going to start to realize, holy shit, I need to protect my data. No one really has developed a methodology yet, in my opinion, that gives consumer confidence that their data is protected. Encryption has been failed. BlackBerry has a great encryption algorithm that they've been trying to move with their mobile. And quite frankly, they are not allowed to use it because the governments will not let encryption happen. There's privacy issues all over the place. I was talking about to someone about Box.net and, and how they're doing well on the consumer side, but on the enterprise side, they're struggling because no one wants to put that stuff in the cloud. You know, I mean, it's, it's really difficult. You say. remember that movie, Enemy of the State? Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean you, wanna, you, wanna, you, want, you wanna secure your privacy? You, you, un, you wanna be secure? Unplug, you know? Don't connect to the web. I mean, I think the, the promise of things like Hadoop, where you have scale out kind of commodity storage with you know, MapReduce, you can really build some nice security from a, from a do-over standpoint, as we've been saying, to develop that low cost capability to actually store data, little data, big data, fast data, whatever you want to call it, in that way allows for new security schemes to be put in place. So I think you're going to see a whole new security paradigm around that. Yeah, online search price might be better today, Dave, but I just still think we haven't seen the security model of the future. I, I would agree. I mean, I don't mean to minimize the whole security and privacy thing, but my point is simply that if you're on Facebook, if you're using an iPhone or any kind of mobile device, you know, there's no privacy. You, you, you don't have privacy. That's illusory if you think somehow with your Facebook settings you're going to you know, maintain privacy. You know, it's, your your data is not private. There's more information about you today uh, than there was three years ago. And, and two years from now, there's going to be much, much more information about you. So it's so, accessible. So we have Ray Wang, who's going to be stopping by at one o'clock, and I said one one fifteen. So if we want to do a quick uh, you know, riff on what's going on um, here at Oracle, um, do we have something we can go to? We have want to thank all the people out there right now. We're going to continue going all day long here at Oracle Open World. We're in San Francisco, California, actually right around the street from Justin.tv's headquarters. So the folks out there, Justin TV fans, thanks for watching. I'm John Furry, the founder of Silicon Angle. And I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Yeah, Justin TV, fabulous uh, uh, platform. And, uh, yeah, and so we're going to continue them. all day long today. We're going to go until 5 o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is SiliconAngle.tv. It's our flagship telecast called The Cube. The Cube goes to events. We go talk to the smartest people and extract the signal from the noise and share it with you. We go in-depth coverage every day to the most important tech events. No one does this. We're the only ones doing it. Uh, we like to do it. You know, uh, we push I, I hard, play hard, and uh, have a lot of fun doing I, it. I should mention too, now's maybe probably a good time. Everything that we have on our sites is open source, right? I mean, all the content, it's, it's, it's free. The Wikibon content's available under the GNU license. If you want to edit it, go ahead and edit. It's very, very much like Wikipedia. You want, to, you want to make a contribution, go ahead. John and SiliconANGLE, you've got a network of bloggers. If you're interested in doing that, contact us. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, it's a new type of model. And you know, we're there, we're there to serve the community. You are our community, we thank you for your, for your watching, your participation, your contributions, and uh, keep them coming. All right, so Mark.